and found, uh, moved this to conclusion. So I'd like to turn this over to her. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is my sincere pleasure to formally introduce to the entire Board of Trustees Dr. Gregory Truckenmiller for your consideration as the next president of Fulton Montgomery Community College. Dr. Truckenmiller has served as the acting president since August of 2019, leading the campus through one of the most difficult times in SUNY's history, the pandemic. He's served the college in various high-profile leadership positions for the last 18 years, most recently serving as its provost and vice president of academic affairs. Dr. Truckenmiller, who received both his Doctor of Philosophy, Master's, and Bachelor's from the University of, of Iowa, has provided tremendous leadership experience in many things, including student success, securing millions of dollars in workforce development and higher ed grants, strategic direction for academics, institutional accreditation, labor relations, and has brought not only leadership to his campus, but to the community it serves. In addition to the support of Chancellor Malatros, this board, the faculty, the search committee, and the unanimous support of the Fulton Montgomery Community College of, of Trustees, I'd just like to end by sharing with you who he is. When he was first introduced as a possible candidate for the position, the faculty and students were listening to him as a potential candidate. And I will say to you that the students, of which there were three, said to me, Johanna, you seem like a nice lady, but why don't you just appoint him now? He's wonderful. <laughs> that's the gentleman that's coming in for your consideration today. So, may I have a motion? May I have a second? Chair, I'd like to re read the result quote. <laughs> Resolved that the appointment of Greg Truckenmiller, excuse me, Gregory Truckenmiller, as president of Fulton Montgomery Community College by the Fulton Montgomery Community College Board of Trustees, effective immediately, at a salary of $150,000, be and hereby is approved. Now, motion. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Sir. Oh wait, you have someone with you. Wait, your board chair is here. So. Who wants to go first? first. Well, let be brief. I'll do so. Okay. Regardless of the lecture, you can see my notes came out of a very small piece of paper. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner. Thank you um, to the SUNY Board of Trent. Trustees, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you to the SUNY Board of Trustees. Thank you to uh, Chancellor Malatras. Um, thank you to Johanna Duncan Portier for her leadership through our process. And thank you to Jennifer Miller for providing such great uh, support. Also, thank you to uh, my board. Our FMCC Board of Trustees was fantastically supportive of this process. Our search committee and the leadership team at FMCC. Um, R.H. Perry and Associates worked with us very well as our search consultants and uh, provided us with great guidance. We were, we were presented with a fantastic pool of individuals for this position. Uh, a wonderfully talented group from all over the United States who were interested in SUNY and our community college campus. And that was um, highly rewarding for, for us as a group of trustees and for the community leaders that participated in the search. Um, we found after an exhaustive process that the answer to our next presidential um, commitment was right on our campus. Um, but we did it in a blind way. It's, we looked at the merits of our finalists, we scored them blindly, and in the end, Greg Truckenmiller was hands and above the candidate of choice for our campus. And we're proud to have him with us and proud to uh, hear your appointment today. Greg's coming in at a difficult time, as we all know. Uh, we've all struggled with the uh, pandemic this year, but he's also coming in at a time of change at FMCC. We had a former president with a 13-year tenure who was a, a risk taker and an innovator and, and moved us forward in a time where we had 10 years of growth, but the world was different. 
uh, we had a couple of uh, rabbits in our magic hat. We had a strong international population of students and we had uh, folks that were uh, unable to be accommodated in the CUNY system. And we know that in the political environment we're in today that neither of those things exist anymore. Um, so we're looking at reforming what FMCC means to our communities, how we work together with workforce and government to uh, have a strong community college presence. And, uh, and we look to the future. Uh, Greg has been instrumental in the C5 group of community college presidents who are looking forward to the future and what sharing services and um, finding ways to economize might look like while still preserving the student experience and the rigor that's found on campus. So I thank you again for your appointment and your backing of Greg Truckenmiller, and I'm sure you'll hear great things coming from our campus under his leadership. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Chair Tisch and the SUNY board as well as the chancellor for his support and, and for your vote of confidence in my leadership. Additionally, I'd like to express my thanks to the FM Board of Trustees for their unwavering support during the last 20 months. And of course, a special thank you to Senior Vice Chancellor Johanna Duncan Portier, who has never hesitated to share her wisdom and her guidance. I also want to express my gratitude to the fellow C5 presidents Jeff mentioned Chris Duffy, Carly Drummer, Steady Muno, and Roger Ramzami, whose collaboration and support have been particularly important to me. The faculty and staff at Fulton Montgomery Community College have had to put up with me for the last 21 years, and it's been my absolute pleasure to work alongside them in the good times as well as in the challenging moments. Most important of all, I want to acknowledge the love and support of my family my wife, Rachel, our three sons, Jack, David, and Thomas. During the last two decades, I've had the good fortune to serve the college in a variety of capacities, each of which have deepened my knowledge and deepened my appreciation for the profound impact that FM has had on our community. Indeed, it is that deep connection to our community that has kept me at FM. Our mission as a comprehensive community college is daunting, and the recent challenges make it ever more so. As a small institution, it can be even more difficult. But what enables us to be successful in carrying out our mission is the relationships and the partnerships we've formed. FM is very fortunate to have stable leadership and dedicated faculty and staff members who have internalized the mission and the core values of FM. Given the competing demands of our comprehensive mission, we never lose sight of those we are serving. The impact we have is best understood through the words of those we serve. Here's the story of Katya Marakoa, a 2019 graduate, and I promise it won't be as long as it might sound. <laughs> Katya's journey started four years ago. She visited FM, and after meeting with an academic advisor, she set a goal for herself to enter the Rad Tech program, according to Katya. Reality hit me the week before the first semester of school. I had decided to go back to college after 14 years and after moving here from Puerto Rico. All of my fears came flooding back. I was worried about being an older student. I was worried about the language barrier and thoughts of failure. I did not know what to expect. To my surprise, my first semester went great, and so did the second. I was able to keep a 4.0 GPA despite having a full-time job and a family. On my first day of class, I met Professor Flor Trespalacios. She is one of the most influential and inspiring people I've ever met. She told me when I was accepted in the program that I know you have a full-time job. I know that the x-ray program is not easy. However, I know that you can do this, and I have no doubts about it. I will never forget those words of encouragement. Semester by semester, the director of the Rad Tech program, Carlin Labat, not only taught me how to be the best health care provider I can be, but she also showed me. Mrs. Labat inspired me in the way that she treated her patients. She was caring, loving, and kind. 
The staff at FM prepared me to be the person and caregiver that I am today. Going back to school was the best decision I ever made, but meeting my professors and mentors was the real blessing. Katya graduated in 2019 and accepted a position in a cardiac catheterization lab at a local hospital. She also recently became one of only 55 registered cardiac intervention techs in New York State. It's stories like Katya's that inspire my commitment to the college. I look forward to leading FM as we continue to impact our community one person at a time. Thank you.